Look at this. We're flat as paper. It's like we're in our very own toy theatre. No one toys with me. Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Shadows of the Damned. And you might notice that things are looking a little bit different from last time. For some reason, we're in a side-scrolling shooter. Because why not? So much like how the previous level com introduced a new mechanic... Once again, we're doing something completely different from what we've been doing so far throughout the game. But like the rest of the game, we are fighting demons, and we shoot them to kill them. We also can use the light shot, and we collect white gems. We actually have to be more careful here about not getting hit, however, because uh, in these side-scrolling levels, Garcia cannot take too many hits before dying. He's quite fragile. Ah, and like in the proper game, there is liquor. Don't really need it, but let's get it anyway. Why not? You kind of wonder what they were thinking by putting this in the game. It seems like the whole game is just this non-stop kind of onslaught of... You know, what could we put in the game that would seem interesting? You know, try to keep the, the player's attention. This is certainly different. I mean, it, it does get your attention. There's really no reason for it to be in the game, but anyway, we got a new gun. We got the Teether. It's fortunate because a lot of a lot of demons coming. We only keep it for a limited time, though. See, it's gone already. Oh, hey, it's Justine. And we shoot her and create a checkpoint. So, I, I guess we could probably assume this whole thing was Suda's idea. Oh, Goathead. There are clouds of darkness, and they work the same way as darkness in the proper game does. We want to shoot the goat head with the light shot to get rid of it, and if a demon touches that darkness like that one right there, it becomes invincible until we light shot it. So the same rules that we've been working by in the actual game still do apply here. kind of get the impression that Shadows of the Dam maybe were, were, was made for people with perhaps low attention spans. You know, don't have any one thing happening for too long, just keep on going from one thing to the next to the next to the next. And then hey, here's something that is completely different from anything else you've been doing so far. Here's a side-scrolling shooter section. Okay, we have to shoot that lever, but it's behind that hanging body which is invincible because of the darkness, so we have to get that goat head with the light shot. I should mention that these side-scrolling sections are not, maybe I'll say, the most polished sections. Hold on. Because you can die real easy. You might notice that Garcia is losing, uh, is losing his clothes there, but we'll get him back when we get that liquor. Mm -hmm. There's... Garcia really doesn't have invincibility frames after getting hit, so if you keep getting hit by a demon, you can die in actually just a couple seconds. Alright. Alright, we have to go backwards, but those hanging bodies are blocking us. We can't actually aim behind us, I don't think. Let's get underneath and shoot upwards. Still, I do have to kind of admire how they don't even bother trying to explain how this makes any kind of sense in the continuity we've been seeing so far. It just doesn't make a difference. 
that's not something that's considered important at all. Got hurt a little bit by that darkness, because that still does hurt us in, in this level. And this is not the only one of these levels we'll be encountering, so we'll be seeing this kind of thing again. Alright. We're just about at the end. We get all of these white gems, and that all that should add up to 50. Yes, perfect. We got all the white gems. And we get a red gem for our trouble. So that's it. That was a short video today, but that was Act 4-2. Next time with 4-3, we'll be going back to a normal level. But before we go, since today was so short, let's have another look at one of Shinji Mikami's games with Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 represented a change of pace for the RE series, as well as for its creator, Shinji Mikami. Capcom had gotten a lot of mileage out of the old Resident Evil formula, having made four mainline RE games, but eventually the series needed a new direction. And in 2005, the often delayed Resident Evil 4 was released, bringing with it a gameplay and story style that were deliberately very different from the previous installments in the series. The differences in story were evident immediately, as where the previous RE games had to do with a zombie invasion, RE4 presented a much more personal story. And in a very bold move, gave us a game where we didn't even see the main character's face, and he even dies before the game is over. The main character in RE4 was a new character, Mike. His name is Mike. You're looking for firepower, you've come to the right place. We don't discover his last name or ever actually see him. Mike is a helicopter pilot for the U.S. military, who is sent on a mission to an unnamed European country that is definitely not Spain. He assists Resident Evil 2 alumnus Leon S. Kennedy in killing the members of an organization that has kidnapped Ashley Graham, daughter of the President of the United States. However, tragedy befalls us as Mike's helicopter is shot down, and our brave pilot goes with it. The rest of the game is a revenge story, as Leon vows to destroy the evil organization as well as its leader. I'll make sure you're the next to go, Sadler. But even though Leon is successful in his mission, it's a bittersweet conclusion, as he is left to wonder what could have been. Mike! A part of me I can't let go. Let's leave it at that. Story aside, the other big difference in Resident Evil 4 was the over-the-shoulder perspective, which emphasized heavy combat and precision shooting. RE4 was an innovator in this style of gameplay, which has been appropriated by many other games since, including the one we've been playing. While RE4 has been praised by many reviewers and fans since its release, it's also been criticized for marking the end of the traditional Resident Evil game, as well as for being the inspiration for Resident Evil 5. As for me, Resident Evil 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. While I greatly enjoyed the old style Resident Evil games, RE4 was just so good that it justified the new direction the series was going into. I feel that RE4 still holds up very well today in all areas. Graphics, sound, controls, pacing, and its touching story. I don't think that the game should be looked down upon because it spawned RE5. That game was just a case of Capcom attempting to ape RE4 without having a good idea of what made it great. I just think it's a shame that they weren't able to make a worthy follow-up to one of their best games. 
But Resident Evil 4 isn't just representative of the change in the RE series, it also demonstrates Shinji Mikami's ability as a game director, to take the popular game franchise that he had created and completely reinvent it while making it even better. RE4 is the main reason that people who are familiar with Mikami's works get excited when he's involved with a project, and why the news that Mikami would be collaborating with Suda on Shadows of the Damned was notable. While Shadows cannot be considered as polished as Resident Evil 4, we can definitely see Mikami's mark on the game. Yeah. 